we want to talk about an introduction on computer systems and the C language. Uh, the computer systems are really a series of components that work together and these components include hardware and software. Hardware is are all those physical parts uh, that you have in your computer like the monitor, CPU, the mouse, keyboard. So anything that is physical is hardware and anything that is not physical is software or those are the programs that reside and execute electronically in your hardware. Now, there are different software types, including compilers, operating systems, and application programs. The compilers really translate source code, and uh, the operating systems really provide you with an interface to use the computer, and the application programs really, their function is to solve uh, or provide solutions or solve problems. Now, the computer languages, uh, as I said, there are, main, there are three different kinds, and the first one is machine languages. The machine languages really uh, are the ones that deals with zeros and ones. And I'm going to talk about more about them in just a few seconds. Also, we have the assembly languages and the high-level languages. Now, the machine languages really consist of such long strings of zeros and ones, and this is what the computer understand, and it really is the computer language. The computer, you know, it's a very fast device, but it's not a very, um, let's say, intelligent device. It all, it, all that it understands is zeros or ones. And zero stands for there is no electricity, and one there is electricity or current. So that's pretty much all that the computer can understand. And those are the machine languages. Uh, that's what the machine languages deal with. Of course, this is a, a, the natural language for the computers, but it's really the worst uh, possible language for humans, and they are almost impossible to understand. It's just a long series of zeros and ones. And uh, then we have the assembly languages that are a step forward or a step up uh, in the machine languages. And these are really uh, start to use, uh, these, these languages you start to use English-like abbreviations to um, indicate commands, and they, they look a little bit more like the uh, languages we have today. But still, they are really uh, dependent on the architecture you use, and they are really difficult to learn too at the same time, because uh, you have to program depending on the computer you are using. And uh, for example, you have to know exactly uh, the location in memory of different variables that you want to use, and uh, use hexadecimal code to access these addresses and it's, it's really much more complicated and really it's not really in use currently that much. Now we have the high level languages that are most of them and uh, these are the ones that everybody's using and uh, you know it's really close to how we speak or how we will solve a problem and they use you know uh, different instructions Similarly to the assembly languages, but uh, much more detail and with a richer set of commands to simplify to simplify any task. Uh, they have different statements and they, they have different ways of doing things that is far superior, at least in simplicity, to uh, assembly languages. And they use a translator called a compiler that converts this high language or high level language into machine code. There are different, different, uh, a few differences between the high-level languages and assembly languages is that, for example, like I said before, the high-level languages uh, are portable and the assembly languages are not portable and totally dependent on the architecture of the processor that you're using. Also, the high-level uh, languages require a compiler to convert the code to machine le level code and the assembly required assemblers or assembler to convert the assembly to machine level code. It's two different processes and two different um, things that require. Now nowadays okay the 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 compilers are smart enough to even not use uh, the compilers to generate machine language. So this is mainly the, the differences between one and the other. So let's see how a 
C or C++ program is created and executed. The first thing you have to do is create a source program and that is simply a text file that includes all the commands with the logic of what you want to do. Now, um, this is accomplished in an editor and it could be really a specifically designed editor for C or it could be really even something like Notepad, anything that you can write on the computer can be used. Of course the specialized editors have many advantages like line numbers, they will color code the commands or the, or the different instructions, they will um, look for errors and many other things. So that's one of, one of the advantages of using the specifically designed uh, editors for C. And of course they store this program in a, in a hard drive and they uh, for then be moved to memory when they are executed. And all these C programs should be uh, named with the extension .c and this is a convention and this tells the programs uh, that use these files that these are C language source code. Now the second phase is the compiler or preprocessor and here is where you give it a command to compile in the program and when it compiles what it does it translates the C program into those zeros and ones or machine language code also referred as object code. Um, in the C system a preprocessor program executes automatically before the compiler translation phase begins and that's just a way that the way that C works. So the third phase is the creation of this object program and as I said uh, the compiler translates the C program into these zeros and ones and create something that is called the object program which is nothing else than the, this machine language readable only by the computer file. The fourth phase is the linking phase. In the linking, you know, you have different references in a program normally to different libraries or different processes that are not uh, really included in what you are coding. These uh, references are called links and uh, in this fourth phase all those links are kind of collected and integrated into your application so the program can function and do what it's supposed to do without any missing pieces. The fifth phase is the loading and here's where the program will load into memory from the hard drive to the memory and it will be ready to be executed. Um, once that is completed um, also uh, well, while that is completed also, if there are additional components, they will be also integrated and loaded into the memory. And finally, we have the execution and output, where the code that you wrote is actually executed, and you can see the output on the display or any output that uh, you have uh, programmed. And well, that's pretty much uh, the basics of it just it's important to remember these key terms source program is really the printable readable program file that is the file that has the code that you write and is readable by any human then we have the object program which is a non-printable machine readable file that is not really readable by humans but it's intended for the computer we also have the executable program again it's an executable code for the computer and we have the syntax errors that those are errors that reported by the compiler and uh, when you you know compile the software it will run uh, different checks and tell you that it's an error in anything that you have written and these are called syntax errors and also we have linker errors which are reported by the linker and those are errors uh, that are reported in the linking phase if there is any libraries that you are referring to that are missing or there is a problem in any of them you have a linking error then you have execution runtime errors which are reported by the operating system. The operating system is responsible for catching those errors and this happens when the code is executed and you're starting to see the output or you know during the execution. And then we have the logic errors which are really not reported and not really catchable by the computer and those are errors that you have to uh, see yourself and uh, correct yourself and uh, basically has to do with the logic that you will have in your program and very, very specific to your program.